Welcome back to the podcast. I am Mr. Made Over. I am Mrs. Made Over. And we want to thank y'all. Hope you enjoyed y'all. Right, <clears throat> nah. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed y'all. Thanksgiving. Spending time with your family because we definitely did. My wife turned into the light-skinned Rachel Ray <laughs> over the holidays. All of a sudden, it was cookies <laughs> being made. It was revamped, dipped. It was like, it was a feast, people. I tell you It this. was not I a was, feast. Hey, come on now. Oh. Um, uh, uh, sorry, can I, gender can I on you? Okay, sorry. My bad. You Go you know ahead, boo, boo. But okay. it was so delicious. And I, as <laughs> I'm eating this, I'm, at, I'm excited. But I'm getting a little ticked off because this is a nice spread. But she asked me, what did I want? You know, I said I something yeah. small, you know. I didn't want to do Thanksgiving like normal, like a whole bunch of food that you're going to have left over for at least five weeks. If you got to freeze and bring it out. What we eat today? Uh, the, <laughs> the turkey leg. The today. turkey leg. You know, like, we I didn't want to deal with that. Turkey today. Today. You know, I, I was like, I, I was kind of, I'm kind of just like, I was kind of over it. So. When I seen this spread, I'm like, oh my goodness. If you see us talking, because my little daughter's right here. Come here. You, come here. Stick your hand. Come here. Stick your hand over there. Say hey. Say, say, say hey to the people. Hi. All right. Sit down. Now, uh. <laughs> <laughs> now, wonderful spread, people. Awesome spread. Only wanted minimum things, but for some reason, I wake up to a wife that is throwing down. I mean, oh, that's right, because you were asleep. <laughs> you know what I'm I mean, throwing down. I think know, I made so. three batches of cookies. So, I mean, it, it, it was truly fun. It was um, another eye awakening that my wife can still throw down when she wants to. Um, but uh, that's not me venting. I just need some advice. Um, so, Bay, how did you enjoy? Uh, I had fun. I talked about the outside, but how, like, you inside did it, I fit? You know? oh, me in the kitchen? Y'all, yeah. I, was, I was tired. Because I think um, being off or going into the break, I was like, I didn't want to, I want to do nothing work related. Mm. Nothing. Like, nothing. I wanted to really be teacher off duty wife and mom focused um and so i really enjoyed i was tired because i still ended up i cooked what thursday night yeah i cooked thursday night then i turned around and i cooked fish friday mm -hmm. actually i cooked every day last week i don't know man i was so spoiled I was so i cooked spoiled. almost every i want to say i cooked almost every day last week and then when it came down to um, cooking for Thanksgiving, I was, I was like, mm, I don't know what I want to make because in my mind, I wanted like a little bit of stuff, but like, I didn't want to make the greens. I wanted green, you know, the girls wanted green beans. So I wanted, my goal was to have things that I knew that we would actually eat versus having so many, so much food and all those leftovers that we end up having to toss, toss out. Mm, um, so I think we did good because I think I'm at the we had a, a small bowl of mac. You just finished the wings off. I, we got what dip, which you might end up finishing that off. Green oh, beans God, are man. gone. So the only thing we have is like things that we got when we went, you know, over to extended family house. Yeah. And that, you know, dressing is getting frozen, so I don't have to have any more dressing for Christmas I'm or New think, Year's. Okay, so you're gonna eat that for. Christmas. Right? That'll be Christmas. Cause it's like some... Dressing is such a, a, a certain kind. It's a Thanksgiving taste. Yeah, but I do. Food. Yeah, I do. I'll do Thanksgiving or Christmas. I mean, or if we want to bring it out one Sunday. Like, like I don't it's... know who make dressing throughout the week. Like no, like, okay. some people. Some people will. It just depends, cause you know my mom will make it for like a Sunday dinner, and then if it's some left over. Yeah. But what we have, so I did. I felt really good. Uh, I actually went a couple of. Um, I know we talked about my anxiety um, a couple of shows back, and I actually accidentally 
went two days last week without my medication and um, two 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 unbeknown to me <laughs> two and they were um one one was accident and i just realized i took it too late and then the other or didn't take it and it was already the end of the night and then the other one um was actually thanksgiving day that i hadn't took it and that was because i got up i started cooking we ate and then it was like okay let's get moving um I, ha- I actually have one for the morning. I think I turned it off on my watch, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Don't but, do that today. No. But I um, I did immediately take it, but I was able to kind of, like, calm myself down in those little small moments. Um, but, yeah, overall, I'm glad that I was out of teacher mode. I wasn't teacher bae. I was wife bae. I appreciate that. Yeah. So. Now, the only thing that did take my mind, I will be honest, is Call of Duty Mobile. <laughs> That's the only thing that I think Man, I I'm really... I'm trying to get here to come to the big world. He wants me to play on the controller on the game, but I don't want to buy a game. Just super, bless I don't, Yeah. I don't want to spend $70 on a game, and then I don't have the time to, like, oh, so jump nice. in and play. Yeah, I, I would make time to come in here. I've been here playing. You should be thinking, so like, I ain't played it yet. yet. <laughs> I give me a shirt that say Netflix... <laughs> COD grading. Crazy. <laughs> that yeah, I can. Don't steal that, cause I might make that shirt for real. But speaking of food, today's topic is. I'm gonna let my wife do. I always say today's topic is. Today's topic is. I'm supposed to say what it is. Oh, I got. Oh, I thought you was gonna. I thought I was gonna throw it to you. No. No. Can I pass out like that dude last night? Uh, <laughs> nah. um. You haven't said that in so long. <laughs> He's so crazy. Okay, sorry y'all. We've been goofy. Um, today's topic is out with the old, in with the new. In with the new. In with the new. Now, um, we always hear that. Um, the scripture I, now I just went straight blank. Dad's That's favorite right. scripture. If any man be in Christ, yes, he's a new creature. All things passed away. All, he things, old, all, all things. All things are new. Something. Yeah. No, all. Something. All. Four things. All. All right, but yeah, all things. All things are become new. They become new. So, um, this is it's. Actually, we hear it all the time. Yeah. Um, and so we were listening to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, people. This, I got some squeaky things going Come on up. here. That's Dude, what okay. sprayed down. Go ahead. All right. Come on. All right. Ready? Go. Okay. So um, I was thinking. Actually, it was a different topic that was in my mind during church service because I was like, oh, I wanted to talk about something along those lines. And it was so funny because in the moment of service today, the title was like dropped in my spirit and I did not write it down. Wow. I did not write it down and I lost it. So I had to go back and reread some of the scripture from today because there were some things that kind of stood out. To me, not necessarily that I wanted to like read out loud, Mm -hmm. but some things that were just kind of driving and reinforcing what I wanted to discuss, if that makes sense. Um, Because this is also a topic that I want to tackle with my meeting on Wednesday for FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, um, because I... Uh, help co-sponsor. Out with the old, in with the new. Yeah, I with the old and with the new, and it's basically if you just. Bring me in on the Zoom call. You know, uh, I can sharing. I zoom you? Yeah. I probably could. Go I can. Ahead. I'll try that. But um, we go through so many things in life, right? Yeah. And we clean out our old clothes. So if it's too big, you don't want it. Or sometimes you might keep it just to be comfortable, but then you look frumpy. You know mm. what that is, right? Nah. You look like an old lady, like your stuff just hanging off of you. Wow. <laughs> like I you look kind of old lady. Yeah. Oh, uh, um, I mean, well, <laughs> you just look frumpy. That's that, that's, that's all I can. 
or like the stuff is too little and then you give that away. So I'll, I'll use me for an example. I hoard clothes. <laughs> no, I just wear my shoes that they fall apart. But I hoard clothes. Shoes too. I do not. You said I hoard shoes until they fall apart. I ho- I wear them until they fall apart. That's not hoarding because I'm actually wearing them. The clothes I can't wear. The shoes, okay, the difference is the shoes I wear them until they literally are falling apart, like they talking or something, okay? So I hold on to them until I get to the point where I want to buy another. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> All right. Till I want to buy another pair. Stop. But the clothes are like things that I really, really liked that were given to me and in my mind I'm like yeah I'm gonna get slim thick and be able to fit in this and the reality of the matter is I might not be slim but I may be trim thick (laughs) and I'm still not gonna fit in those clothes so just like possible I didn't say I'm not I mean not like I can't do it but I'm not I just recently looked at a picture of you uh I don't know if I'm gonna post it but it was a picture an older picture <clears throat> of you, remember was, it was on your. It was actually on your Facebook picture of you and Tyler. Is the in the uh, in the memory thing? Two thousand twelve. That yeah. would have been around that time, probably. Yeah. Jesus, that was like eight years ago. So, but I was slim. I was slim. I was just slim then. I wasn't slim thick then. Mm. Yeah. So, and when I say trim thick is. There's just some hereditary parts about me that I know that some parts will not like go all the way down to when I was younger. And I'm fine with that. But what I had possible though. I didn't say I can't. (laughs) I know talking like that that's like a challenge to me. Say what? You can do this. Can you stop interrupting me, please? So just like we have to get rid of those clothes or those items that are old and start buying the new thing. So like I had, I threw out some shoes and then I bought some shoes and then some shoes that need to be thrown out. I still hadn't thrown them out cause they comfortable, <laughs> but most of the things that were old as far as clothes, I have given that out. Mm-hmm. I got rid of that. And then now I'm replacing. So I got rid of some pants that had some holes in them. I just threw them away because my husband always talks to me, talks about me as far as I need to buy the things that I like. And then his new thing is, is it an asset or is it a liability? Is it well, bringing in money? Right. Is, is it bringing in money, money or is it just taking money? So I've taken on that. Okay. Can I not buy another unit and instead take that money that I would buy for a unit and go buy dress pants? Because I like to look nice. We go to church. You just never know what type of function or business thing we may have where I need to be dressed in something more than jeans. I'm total opposite. Yeah, he doesn't care. Uh, either way, he's going to tell you he's gorgeous. Um, so, so I play the part because I am nine to five. I do sometimes play the part of being business casual or casual. So how that correlates with our life, some things, some things that we hold on to are old habits or old beliefs or old vices. And so just like we rid ourselves of the old things in the tangible manner, Mm -hmm. we have to rid rid ourselves internally of those things that are um that are old which old stuff if i equate to it think about it like this if it's on the inside of you and it's old think about something being in the refrigerator for a long time and it's molding Mm -hmm. because nobody's doing nothing with it it's just in there and the fridge is supposed to preserve preserve certain things but because of the moisture It turns it into certain molds. Well, same thing inside. Inside of us, if we hold on, it rots or decays what's inside of us. So if we never get rid of that old and take on some of the new, more positive things, positive habits, um, we won't have anything internal to show our show newness or display newness to others. Will always be stuck with what's old. Well, let me go ahead and jump rope in here. 
Well, I think that um, we hold on to old things because mm-hmm. it's familiar. Right. We never release things because we don't want to feel uncomfortable. We always feel like if something is being taken, like we feel threatened about that. Like we have to own something. Like we find stability and comfort in owning things. Right. Be, you know, a P, uh, that that's my pen or, you know, that's my car mm-hmm. or that's my whatever. But ultimately, if the value of it, this goes back to the assets and liability. Mm-hmm. I, and, and I look at that not only just from financial stuff, but I look at it from life stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, is, is what you're <laughs> holding on to, is it adding to you? Right, or is it taken away? Or is it taken away? Like, That's what it was. Sorry. Is, is, <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Sorry, you're just seeing abuse. Um, <laughs> get rid of that one. But um, is it adding to or is it taking away? Is like yeah. you being mad, is that adding to your life or is it taking away and, right. and, and pushing people away? Right. Um, like you having an addiction for whatever your device is. Mm-hmm. Is that hindering you or is that elevating you? Right. Or is it is it helping you? And I think a lot of times we are so cluttered on the inside, full with different emotions. When I say I'm talking about emotions, mm-hmm. pain, hurt, um, loss, of loved one, yeah. disappointment. These these lifelong things that we are bottled up with. And when it's shook up, when it's shook up, what happened to a, a a pop when you shake it up and then you open it? It explodes. It's because none of the pressure was released. None of the things that's on the inside was dealt with. Right. And a lot of times I think that we as humans, you got to have, I mean, you have to find an outlet for things. How how do things enter in that is new if you don't get rid of the old things? That's why a lot of our house, I mean, if you sometimes our house is exactly how our minds are. Right. If you if you if you find your house being cluttered, your order, you know, and different other stuff is because nine times out of ten, on the inside, mm-hmm. if you're if you're afraid to let things go on the inside, it'll show on the outside too. Right. And I I had to go to that scripture <laughs> from today. Um, that means kill. Well, first, y'all, it wasn't abuse. When I get excited and I remember something, I wow. like. <laughs> it's like yes, and I do that, and I <laughs> I. I do that to everybody and I have to catch myself um, taking the whatever you're putting in is, is kind of what you're going to get out. Yeah. Um, it took me back to Colossians three, starting with verse five. And it says, I'm reason, reading the message version. Cause to me, that's like the, <laughs> the real talk. It breaks it down in our everyday Talk yeah, with the slang. It says, and that means killing off everything connected with that way of death, which is uh, it has sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like whenever you feel like and grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. Mm-hmm. That's a life shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. It's because of this kind of thing that God is about to explode in anger. And we're seeing that right now. Like we're that's 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 where we are in 2020. (laughs) That's that's real talk. That's society right now. Uh, It wasn't long ago that you were doing all the stuff and not knowing any better, but you know better. So make sure it's all gone for good. The bad temper, the irritability, the meanness, the profanity, the dirty talk. Don't lie to one another. You're you're done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill fitting clothes. You've been stripped off and put into the fire. That's what I meant. The clothes that don't fit anymore. Instead of me holding on to them, I had to give them away. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it. That's good. All, right. All the old fashions are now obsolete. So what we have to remember is that stripping of the old is not just 
now okay it's spring cleaning so I gotta give out everything from the winter that don't work anymore Mm -hmm. or it's the holiday or it's this you know it's three or four or five days late later for leftovers and I gotta throw that out but we also have to throw away those things that are not Christ like because if we don't it's telling you right here that God is about to explode in anger but we are seeing, and it's not about to. He's exploding in, in That's anger, scary, um, because we are doing the things of sexual promiscuity, impurity. We we're lusting, and we're doing whatever we feel like it when we feel like it. And this goes to the believers because a lot of times we are doing. I, I and I, I'm a, I can only talk about our church because of what we like, what we're being taught. We are being taught this exact word, right? But we are still going so far from it. And it's so plain as day. It is such a simplistic language. And it does remind me how mom and dad preach reminds me of the message Bible. It is just straightforward and it is so relatable, but we want to hold on to the things because we want to do what we feel like doing. And whenever we do it, because we don't want to, have we don't want to feel like somebody is dictating our life i'll put it to you like this that's why i don't really get into feelings because yeah, feelings can lead you down first of all a dangerous path yeah and like my spiritual father always talk about a lot of people are saved but they're not delivered right and that not delivered is hoarding on to holding on to mm-hmm. those things that you did <laughs> when you were in the world. So right. you're trying to carry them over. Like I you're hoarding, like, you're hoarding your old feelings. You're hoarding your vices. You're hoarding your the people. Yeah, yeah, we're. I mean, and I mean, and we always talk about we're not um, people that are perfect. There are some things that we still have in us that are old things that we are constantly daily purging ourselves of. Uh, we don't always get it right, but I can guarantee you some of the, the I'm going to say the big, the, the well, all of it's big, but some of the things that were hindering us more than what we deal with now, we had to understand the importance of not only ridding ourselves for the, the betterment of us, but because of our family, because had you still been doing what you, man, and had I been, no, nah, see, so I've been dead. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. So we, we, we understood that importance of how to, get rid of the importance of getting rid of what was old. Well, I believe a lot of people, when you get say, always feel like you're under new management. Right. And I think that if you're under new management, that's like me going to Burger King with the McDonald's shirt on. <laughs> I'm in the wrong establishment. And I feel like God is the new manufacturer. Right. Which means... What he designed, you put out. Right. So when you begin to put out things that are not like God, which means you have the wrong person, the wrong manufacturer running you. Right. You have the wrong management. You have the lo- yeah. You have the wrong label. And 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 at the end of the day, and at the end of it all, like that's where it goes back to. Like, what are you representing? Like, when I see you, I should see God. I shouldn't see anything but that. So if your lifestyle doesn't line up to that. Mm-hmm. And it's it and it's not what it's supposed to be, and you and, and a lot of times we know when we are. Oh yeah, because we go away from those things that keep us on, <laughs> and then we we begin to cut ties with things that actually puts us in place. Right. So for 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 a person to tell me, well, I didn't know that it's gonna happen, or all this. Thing. Oh, you knew. You knew it was coming. I call it premeditated <laughs> sin. <laughs> <laughs> you you plotted it out from plotted A it. to Z, and you knew the loophole, like so you, you knew wouldn't the loophole. get caught. So my thing is this: stop taking on old, and let God create you into something new. And it's kind of like this. And when you said manufacture, like when you said God is our main, look at it as God is our manufacturer. Yeah. Well. We know that when we purchase things, it always comes with a manufacturer warranty on it, mm-hmm. right? At least a year, right? That's right. 
some do come with some do electronics can yeah. we can i use yeah. Yeah. electronics come with like a year right so if god is telling us like if if it's if the bible is saying that god is married to the backslider that is our warranty but <laughs> but Huh? Don't stay there. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. But we have to learn if I break the sc- if if I drop my laptop, right, and I crack my screen. Next time, I'm not trying to drop it and crack the screen. It might be another malfunction. But if I'm having to if I keep breaking it the same way, then that's a problem because then it becomes insanity because now I'm I'm breaking the same thing <clears throat> over and over and over again. And I'm expecting God to come with his warranty and fix it so I can be like new from the main factor. Hmm. But it doesn't work that way because we are supposed to go and sin no more. Yeah. Go and learn from your mistake. So if we, and I think what's happening is our feelings, or I believe because I that think, you know, sometimes your thoughts can be all jacked up too, depending on what's on the inside. But I believe that what we don't want to do is we don't want to acknowledge where we are. That's first and foremost. We don't want to acknowledge where we are. We're okay with keeping the mask on. Like we mask it. So we, we already are in denial ourselves because we played this good game by wearing this mask. When but she's I'm, talking about I'm, mask, she's talking about like, like... Like masking who you are or what's going on with you. Putting on the fakeness, putting on the facade. Okay, well, okay? definitely. Yeah. It's corona out here, so you got to wear yeah. a mask. So not a face yeah, mask, but talking. putting on the facade that you're good or putting on the facade that you're doing what you're supposed to do. And we see it all the time. And I always look at my husband and I'm like, but babe, why? B- babe, how can they? And it's because I'm in a place now, not that I did not used to wear a facade or pretend I was doing what was right when I would do what was right outside and then inside I was doing some other stuff. But... It, it when it brought me conviction, it was like, okay, let me not continue to do the same things, yeah. okay? And I mean, this is I'll I'll keep it like clean. But when I was doing things and running around loose, I when I shouldn't there. be, huh? I wasn't there. What? So don't look at me. I wasn't there. Gosh, but, I'm. Okay. But when I was running. <laughs> Continue. Oh gosh! But when I was running around loose, you know, I was always like, "Okay, please don't let me get caught up. I ain't gonna do it no more." And what did I do? Run around loose again, please. But then I had to. I think it was like one one night. I was just laying in bed. I was like, "Man, you foolish! Like you crazy? What are you doing?" And it was like. I can't keep doing the old thing because I knew I wanted a family. I knew I wanted a husband and the life that I was living, which was the old me and the old habits because of old things that had bottled up, like you said, had bottled up and it was manifesting in just my loose behavior. And so on the outside, you thought, oh, she was good. She was together. Inside, I was broken. Inside, I was torn. And my loose behavior was kind of displaying that. But I was still put on the facade about that, too, because I was very secretive and very sneaky yeah, with it. You're pretty good now. I was. I was very manipulative in those ways. <laughs> like, that is that is so true. Because he was like, you did what? And I'm like, yeah, I know, man. Because, like I said, we were friends before we were married. So he knew all my dirt if he wanted to air all the dirty laundry he could he just didn't have like video to prove it like actual video he probably could have recorded my voice and everything and yeah but what's the point but what's the point so with all of that i had to realize that me running that same sin or running in that same sin like god wasn't gonna forgive me with that and i had i mean there were consequences i won't even lie there were some consequences and i'm so glad that it wasn't you know big big ones but i knew that because i wanted better 
I could not keep doing the same old things. And then even when times got rough with us, I could not go back to that same lifestyle because that was, now I wanted to, I wanted to pop a bottle and have a drink. I wanted to call, you know, and pull out the, you, you know, I didn't have a black book. I just had all the phone numbers. I wanted to do that. I had, you know, there were connections I could have done, but for what? When I've already declared that I dropped that old stuff back then. So why am I going to go back and pick it up? Well, you know, because it's comfortable. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, I know that that's just a rhetorical question. But for for a lot of people, that's just where they are. Like, a lot of people don't want change. They say they want change, scream I want change. I want to be financially stable. At the end of the day, they're still spending Money loose Man. like ain't nobody's business. <laughs> they so, standing in line. You know, what's that? The gen? What it is? Next gen? Ne- uh, yeah. Now, now that I don't. No, I'm not gonna stand in line. I'm telling you that now. No, but I'm saying. But, but too though, honey, you're not sitting there trying to trying to get it, and you like you don't you want it, but you're not making it to where it is now above everything else that has to be paid. Because for me, it's, it's with. Understand something. My thing is always assets and liability. Right. For me, it's an asset. For a lot of people, it's a liability. Right. This thing will always like any, anything I purchase will bring in money. I don't give a care what it is. I got these fish in here. They're gonna bring in money. I, love I got these uh, snails in here. They're going to bring in money. But at the end of the day, we have to get to a crossing point. And you won't get there unless you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. I think for me, when God snatched me from where I was as far as Ohio and different other stuff, like, he snatched me away from anything that was familiar. So I wake up every day uncomfortable until this day. I still wake up uncomfortable because I'm still not familiar with this area. I don't know what these Babe, people are saying really? half of the time. You- I have to ask them over and over. But at the end of the day, my me being uncomfortable led to me being a dominant male like I'm supposed to be. I was able to stand in my position 10 toes deep because I was uncomfortable. It wasn't because I was comfortable because if I was comfortable, I'd just talk this red bone into moving to Ohio no. and being in bondage with me. But I didn't. <laughs> but the thing is being uncomfortable, I swear to you, is so rewarding. Push past the comfort zone. Push past that 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 zone where you feel like this is this is who I am. Right. This is who God made me. No, He made you to be a king's kid. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, mm-hmm. you're not who you think you are. Yeah. Become who you supposed to be in Him. And what a fussy, I'm a little aggressive. But at the end of the day, listen, people. <laughs> My heart goes out to people right about now who is literally fighting this ongoing battle and you just keep putting an obstacle in your way. You God do. keep providing ways for you to get around it or blow through it, but you just keep going, putting it right back in your way. And I tell you this right now, you will not get to a place right. where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be doing this not just for you, right. but for, for your future, for your family, family. Are you setting yourself up? Are you setting your family up for like when you do die, when you do go away, that they're taken care of? I answer that question, no. Hey, you fussing. I am. You fussing. But at the end of the day, like, put forth the effort. Your kids, your your kids deserve a whole lot better Mm -hmm. than what you're giving them. For me, I'm fighting so much as far as when it comes to my family. That's why I wake up every day. To give a hundred percent, hundred ten percent, because they deserve that. These kids can't fight for themselves. Mm-mm. They need somebody that's gonna fight for them. Right. So these I adults acting like children, me. grow up. What you mean? How I long? Am like, wrong. like, like, how long will you sit here and do the same thing over and over? This generational thing. Somebody has to stop it. Somebody got to put it to the side. Can I say it down? How? Okay, I don't know if I can say it. I feel like we should just drop the mic and be like, all right, thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly. That, no, mean, but see, I mean, you, you said you made valid points because I just sigh because we we are living this right now. And so when I see people that at one point 
displayed, I'll just say displayed, being sold out. And now the fact that we have been quarantined, quarantined like all Hades done just broke loose. And like they it's just the life. But I wouldn't say uh, I wouldn't say Hades is broke loose. I, and, you know, I had this conversation with my spiritual father that. People are showing the true colors. Yeah, I mean, but that's what I mean. Like, it just, like... like they have nothing to hide Yeah, that's behind. what I'm saying. That's you what I'm know, saying. Like, it, no it's broken loose. to really hide behind. Now, right. now we see, really, like, when you in church, what like, what is the motive? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's when yeah. I mean, I hate, like, you're doing everything willy-nilly. Like, you showing all of this. But then the crazy part will be when the Bible speaks of several times when, you know, God was angry. Mm-hmm. But we don't want to talk about that. We don't want to. We don't. It's just like if Picasso in there who sleep, <laughs> Picasso, who in there sleep, <laughs> drawing on the chair. <laughs> she doodles on the My chair for our four year old. Nicole, somehow we have yet to figure out when she's drawing. Her sister said it's during class time. I know it's during class. Time. So it has to be during Zoom. That's what that's what is going on. It's doing Zoom. Okay. So her sister said yes. She confirmed snitch. it's during Zoom. She snitched. She didn't. She just threw her on the bus. But if I tell her one time, and I have yet, yeah, we we've told her not to draw. But it went from a little mark, right? It went from a dot. Then I think it went to like a small line. Then it went to like a bigger line. And because it was kind of like, hey, don't draw on the furniture. You're not supposed to draw on the furniture. It was very calm, right? Don't do this. We're trying to make sure that we have something nice. That's how we present it. Not that the materialistic part of it is, mm-hmm. but we want to teach our children how to take care of the nice things that yeah, yeah. we are providing for them. Um, and then... It went to like a full blown picture and it was like, hey, you been not drawing this couch no more. All right. Then (laughs) this week (laughs) I found a huge, nice little image man just drawn on the back. It was like, no, now you're going to get reprimanded. Now I'm going to give you the toothbrush and show you how like this is how it feels to have to clean this up. Mm. And I I didn't do it for long. I, I but I just I made now I'm making it clear that you are now in trouble. And when you make a mess, this type of thing, you're going to be the one doing the labor to get it cleaned up. And your actions but, have repercussions, right? And you're and what yeah. you're doing. So I went. So it's kind of like sin is is the same across the board. It, it no matter what you do, how whatever magnitude, all of it is the same. So we start out with a. It might be a lie. Right. And we said, oh, it's just a little small lie. But then we got to lie again because we got to cover that first lie. Then we got to lie again. And then the lie just gets bigger. And then once that lie gets so big, it's going to lead into other things. And if we don't get reprimanded Mm -hmm. and accept it, that's the thing. Because a lot of us are like, oh, man, whatever. But if we don't realize that right there in that time when we're getting reprimanded, that is God letting us know, like, all right now, because I done told you. Not only accept it, but apply it. Apply it, yeah. That too. That yeah. Yeah, that's key. Because that's the that's the biggest key. And and I I've said it before in some of our podcasts, and I'm gonna say it again. The reason why we are so sorry put together during this Oh, sorry, y'all. Started over. The reason why we are so put together. I am. The reason why we are so put together during um, during this time is because everything that is being taught to us, we are not only hearing it, but we are listening to make sure that we are comprehending it. And then we are also applying those things. That is why we're able to sit here and basically pour out to you what we are recognizing and pour out because we've also been there. So to be able to have been there and then now we're not really struggling with those things anymore. We can come and speak to it on a, on a, on an uplifting note because we now have the tools of the application to be able to deal with what's going on. Right. Right. So, I mean, some days I want to flip a table over, but I'm letting you know, like, yo, it's not, yeah, flipping tables over like Jesus. Remember I told you I had a kid that was, you know, he was going to flip a table over like Jesus. He was mad. But 
in it all, y'all, we have to understand where we are. It's society is running amok, like doing whatever, whenever, and we are falling. Some of us, most of us are falling into what society is saying is cool. Like I'm... uh, I'm so sick of seeing some stuff being sold left and right and just being out there Mm -hmm. to where it's just, it's now too much. Well, it goes back to uh, just looking at this scripture. Yeah. Um, Second Chronicles 7 and 14, when it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves Mm -hmm. and pray and Mm -hmm. seek my face and turn from, from their, their wicked, wicked ways. ways. Mm-hmm. I just want to do deal with the seek his face and turn. And turn is to me to go the opposite way. Right. So, so which means everything that you've known, everything that you've done, everything that you did did when you were in sin, mm-hmm. turn and seek his face. A lot of times I believe, man, it's crazy. That's good. But it goes back to when uh Mom broke it down to me that a lot of people, they're like, Lord, I love you. And they, they, mm. they, they're looking at the father, seeking his face, mm-hmm. but gradually turning, gradually turning. Still oh, saying, yeah, I Lord, that. I love yes, you, yes, yes. but they're, they're, they're turning still. Yeah. So which means you're not even seeking his face. Right. You're seeking other things. And I think that's what we have gotten to the point where materialistic mm-hmm. views mm-hmm. like and everything else comments, is before it got sub, com- yeah. comments, different other stuff. You know, for, yeah, well, y'all know how I feel about the views and the comments. For me, it doesn't really matter. Right. I'm just concerned about your soul and and and, and how you're living. Right. But like, I want you to get this to live a a a a a, a stress free life. Yeah. It's possible. Th- yes, things happen in life and things come about. But I'm trying to give you things to deal with it. Right. I'm trying to give you devices to deal with your devices. Mm, and, and 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 if you don't get to the point where you want to change, I know a lot of people, I talk to a lot of people, and they talk about, you know, I want to change. It, like, it, really it's an ongoing that. conversation. And for me, if you want to change, you'll really change. And we talked about that. And too. I said yeah. in 2021, I just feel like, like I can't, I can't afford to let people stop the position that God is trying to mm-hmm. take me. Cause a lot of times we be trying to help people, help people, help people, help people, help people. And then we lose or lose out on the fact that it's other people who need your help. Right. It, it, if this person is not taking your them. help, yeah, right. if your per- this person is not taking your help. It's, it, it, you, while you're trying to convert and deal with one, mm-hmm. it's 25 over here yep. saying, give me the help and I'll yeah, do what you I'll want me you. to yep. do. Like, tell me how to live this life. I'm fresh in this thing because COVID has shooken me and I'm scared. Right. And I do not know but what to do. It reminds me of, and, and it's crazy because you, that same scenario where you're saying you're turning. I remember when, <sighs> when I was and I always used to, I, I shouldn't use the term fleeing, but that's always what I felt like it was when I was fleeing from Arizona <laughs> eight years ago. And one of the things you told me, you said, get everything that you need and leave the rest, get what you need, then leave the rest. And then you told me, you said, and when you leave, do not look back. So yeah, we go. Nothing was me. <laughs> and so <laughs> I never understood that, but in that moment or in in that time period of my life, that was when I had begun to actually really truly start seeking the face of God. So even though certain things never made sense, even though things from this man who was sometimes inebriated <laughs> most, of most of the time. And was giving me instructions. It never really made sense until after the fact. So it made sense after the fact. But in that moment, I was looking for somebody who was. Were you grounded then? (laughs) Grounded enough. Like you were grounded in your faith, though. Being being brought up. Yeah. (laughs) My mom. No, I said, were you grounded? I I believe she put a grounded wire in me. 
she established the grounding wire in us. Cause like when I tell you, like I will go away from the faith, but always feel this tug. I will always feel this pull. Yeah. And like the things I did, I really didn't want to do. Like I didn't want to drink. I never wanted to 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 smoke. I never wanted to sleep with chicks on and off, on and off type of stuff. But when you're put in so many different predicaments mm-hmm. and so many different things, you feel like this is how this it's supposed is how, to yeah. be. And when is, you have nobody in your circle saying, hey, man, don't, don't do, do this. Man. Now, my circle, like, come on, let's do this. Yeah. Plus more. <laughs> After you do this, let's do this, too. See. And why are you doing this? Let's do this. So I never had anybody to tell me, mm-hmm. nah, don't do this. I had a, I had my uncles tell me, hey, don't be like that. No, he, my uncle said, don't be like me. But what does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah. I was never told what that mean or what that meant. So for me, it was like, I think, lack of guidance. Mm-hmm. But I always felt that tug on my heart. Always felt that tug okay. on my heart. So he was grounded, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> grounded, but, but confused. <laughs> yeah, but it... That's what it made me think of in that moment of we have to learn how to follow the strict instructions. Yeah. Because had I not followed your instructions, <laughs> who, um, I don't even want to think of what could have become or what could have happened. Um, but we just have to get to that point where we are focused because too many times and I, <sighs> I meet these friends <laughs> Every time I go to store, I have I think I've mentioned about my friends. I meet my my these friends, and I and I don't know, and I know is people like we well, using that word too loosely. Yes, but these people, I call them my friends because I don't know these people, and we can strike up the most amazing conversation, and it is truly like somebody that I like I've known, and we just haven't seen each other in a long time. But you also gotta think about this too, like a lot of time. And you can say, like, you meet friends and you know off rip, nah. Yeah. And yeah, th- yeah. And I do, I, yeah, I have to say it too. So you, I have met people <laughs> <laughs> in store. Like, this is cool, but, uh, yeah. So, like, I've met, I've met, store. I've met friends yeah. that I've kind of been like, nah, let me just give, let me just impart what I'm supposed to impart in that moment and then move on. But then I have friends like the one that I met the other day, um, where and I've only had two people that I've met in the store and have like exchanged the number and we like communicate via text. Mm-hmm. Um and it's because there is some type of there is a commonality and you could just tell you, I mean you always say people always say they can sense the presence. Um Whoa. and so uh, I I love talking to random people in the store that I always visit but I think sometimes there's a pull for me to do that instead of trying to go to the people. And it's kind of like what you just said with you're focused on that one, but then you got all of these others. Um, Because so many times I see people that I know that are either have had the same teaching or they, they know what they, they know the right from the wrong. Mm -hmm. And so and I don't know, should I feel bad about this or not? But a lot of times it's kind of like, I'm not finna waste my time talking to you because you already know what you should be doing. Yeah. Like, you you know better. At, at this point where we are, we know better. Like, I've been doing this thing for real, for real, for the last eight, yeah, eight years. It's been, yes, ooh, wow, it's been eight years. Yeah. Eight years. And so... I know what's right from wrong. I know when I'm falling off. So, if... I'm falling off and I know it, then you should also know it because we're under the same grounding. Yeah. And so it, I get excited when I can go in a store and I can actually just talk to some people and it just be genuine. And then there's a genuine connection behind it. And like I said, sometimes eh, I know my limits, but I say what I need to say and I keep on moving. Say yeah. what I need to say. Oh, um, <laughs> I had a, I've had a couple. That's why I laughed a couple times. I wasn't laughing at what he was saying, but I had little songs because he wouldn't do that to me. Um, I just didn't sing them out loud. Uh, but it's kind of like when you leave that. The, what's the the song? The ninety nine. Leave the ninety nine for the one. 
the reckless love. Yeah, the reckless love. Okay. <laughs> when saying God left that 99 for that one, but how many times that same one going to keep straying off? Thing like, about it is that God, God is a gentle. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah. You know, and, and he, but he, we, he won't force himself in. But if we already know, okay, so I'm, I'm the believers. If we already know this, why are we continuing to take him for granted? Save, but not deliver. deliver. Okay, got it. That's just what That's it, it is. So, <laughs> so that concludes this. Podcast. Yeah, I was just about to say. So that Honestly, I mean, that's um, really what we can, we can sit here and kick this dead horse all day. But one thing we do want to tell you: out with the old, in with the new, and let the new come in. Right. D- do away with the things that you used to do. Right. Do away with the things that are hindering you. That don't mean you any good. Because yeah. Just, I mean, you may think it's just hurting you, but I guarantee you it is hurting everything mm-hmm. that is connected to you. And everybody, too. And everybody mm-hmm. that is connected to you. So your future is connected to a lot of different mm-hmm. people. And 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 I guess this is what we want people to understand that. And I may speak aggressively or, or passionate about it because mm-hmm. I'm concerned about, number one, where your soul going to be. Right. Number two, um, if you're not in position, who's helping that person that's looking for somebody like you? Mm, yeah, there. Yeah, because we, we, the the podcasts that we've been doing have been so centered around the fact that we are we are in the middle of COVID. We don't know when it's going away, but it's not the time for us to be foolish nah. and make decisions that are detrimental to our lives. Um, it's not, and we hear, you know, people play Russian roulette with their lives all the time, just doing whatever and thinking, oh, this is okay. I'm going to be good. But um, I will say this, people are are leaving this world left and right. Um, there is um, a young lady I, I can't even remember a young girl, young girl, a, a baby yeah. um, that I started following um, probably not even really a month ago, I don't think. And this she passed away last night and it was so crazy or this morning. It was so crazy because her mom posted on Instagram stories um, and saying she she hadn't had not taken pictures because she just, you know, she just was not very lethargic. She was tired. So, but they did do a video um, because they they celebrated like Christmas and stuff early. Mm-hmm. And so the the video that I saw and the picture that I saw of her in the story, she looked so peaceful. Mm-hmm. And I knew yesterday that she wasn't going to make it too much longer. I was like, she got like a day or so because like she had, this baby had the most like just and angelic look, but like she was just at peace. She was just, you could just like peace was over her and not that she didn't, I think she's like 11 maybe. Mm. And she knew this is what I want to say. This baby knew the importance of doing what was right. Yeah. This mom can be saying, well, God, I, I don't know why. And I don't like you could be doing everything. But this mom said throughout this bout of her daughter having to fight this, the one thing she can say is God has always and will always be there. So through this, she learned more about the Savior. Not that they weren't always safe, yeah. but this process just brought her closer. Something and so draw you closer. Right. And so. So don't allow something detrimental yeah. like that to get you to where, okay, now I'm going to do right. Get it right before the bad, the, the, the bad or the really bad or something like that happens. Like Lord forbid us being in the, in the foolish state we were in and then something had to like, yeah, like I had, we, well, we had our moments of foolish and I think that is probably something that did help us to get it right. But it wasn't to the point to where like it was life, like literally life or death. What you mean? Like 
where well, okay, I can't speak for you. <laughs> you say you're about, girl. Can't speak for you. But <laughs> I had I had times where I knew if I did not do this one thing, it would not end well. That was the thing that turned me away turned me yeah, turned me away from that life that I was living and put me on my straight course. So use what we are saying to you. Yeah. As and as an example for you to not go back that da- go down the path that we went down or the the t- the trail that we took we're teaching you now because at how old are you 39 um I'm gorgeous at gorgeous and <laughs> more gorgeous at our age gorgeous.com. well he learned early but at my age I was almost I was over 30 or close enough to my 30s to where now the things that I needed were now starting being deposited. So I really got a late start on this thing. So my my platform is don't be older when you can get it younger. That's what I mean, it's some old fools too. That's what I'm saying. So don't be don't be an old fool. <laughs> Go ahead and be a young fool, get it right before you get old so you're not a young fool and an old fool. Fool. Food. But um, but that's not nice. We whatever. can't see. They, they even call it worse things than that. Yeah. But um, it's crazy. What I, and we're about to end off. But when you said stop playing Russian roulette mm-hmm. with your life, I think the the funny thing, I had a flashback to when I was playing Russian roulette with my life for real. Now I'm talking about for real. Like I remember you told me. Like with the with 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 the gun in my hand, spinning the barrel. I was mad at you too, and shooting it at my head because I just when I tell you in a dark, dark place, and like I said, if it wasn't for God, that's why I went, mm-hmm. when when it comes to this thing, when I was in sin, I was in sin a hundred percent. Yeah, you are <laughs> we full are, flesh. You, yeah. you 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 didn't have to ask me. Hey, are you sinning today? Mm-hmm. Bottom of my hand says I'm sinning today, but now that I'm saved and I'm for real saved. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna walk this thing out like ain't nobody's yeah. business. Now, whoever wanna go, whoever wanna come, Let's go. I'm I'm gonna give you the tools. I'm gonna give you the everything that I possess. I guarantee you, whether it be whether and, and for me, it doesn't matter who you are. It, it, God loves everybody, and so do I. So that concludes this podcast i do not apologize for getting aggressive because no. that goes to show how much i love y'all and uh like we always say keep god first and the rest will be at it and we love y'all continue to enjoy this this uh this uh end of the year man we are closing this year aren't you? yeah we got it a month and a day that's it all right we out Thank <laughs> you.